All right, we're down to the last section in the module now where we are looking at some more complicated circuits and analyzing them. I think these are kind of fun. It's kind of like a big puzzle. I, I love putting together uh, jigsaw puzzles or solving other types of puzzles. And so I hope you find these to be fun and you don't find them to be too frustrating. Um, so in example 15.5, we have this particular drawing of a circuit and we're asked to determine the amount of power that is being drawn by that circuit. Now, as you can see, um, my battery or my power source is down here, and then I actually have four different resistors that are hooked up here. What you have to look at first when you start analyzing this is how is this current going to flow through here? So if, it, if I start here with take the path of conventional current, I'm gonna go this direction with it, I can see that all of my current is gonna have to go through the 25 ohm resistor. But then once it gets here, it actually has a choice. It can either go through the 11 ohm resistor or it can go up this way and it can go through the 15 ohm resistor. Then once it gets around this corner, all of the current is gonna to have to go through this 15 ohm resistor before it gets back around and completes the circuit. So the first thing that I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna take these two resistors that are hooked up in parallel to one another and I'm gonna calculate what the effective resistance is for these two right here. So since they are hooked up in parallel, um, I'm gonna be using the equation with the reciprocals in it. So I'm gonna have one over 15 ohms plus one over 11 ohms. So it's this, this one and this one, because I wanna reduce these two to one resistance so I can um, figure out what the whole circuit's gonna look like. So that means that the effective resistance for that piece is going to be 6.3 ohms. So what that tells me then is I can actually take this circuit and I can simplify it to a circuit that looks like this. So I'm gonna have these two that are gonna to simplify together and that's going to be 6.3 ohms and then down here, since everything has to go through this current or through this resistor, this one is 15 ohms. And this one is 25 ohms, which is this one over here. And then I have my power source down here, 1.5 volts, okay? So I first thing again that you're gonna do is take any resistors that are in parallel and simplify them so that all that you have left is a series of series resistors, okay? Now that I have three, these three resistors and they're all in series, I can now add those together because for a series resistor, your effective resistance means you're just, you're just adding those together. So I have 25 ohms plus 6.3 ohms plus 15 ohms. And when I solve for that, that is going to give me a total of 66 ohms. So if I wanted to, I could redraw um, this circuit again and just put one resistance in it with a resistance of 66 ohms in it. You could do that if you wanted to, it's really not necessary. You may need to simplify, especially with some of the diagrams that he gives you, you may want to redraw a circuit that looks like this to something that looks like this. Um, I wouldn't necessarily worry about redrawing this one though once I get it simplified. Okay, so now that I know the effective resistance for the whole circuit, now I'm able to calculate um, what the current is going to be running through that circuit uh, because I know resistance and I know voltage and then I can use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to calculate my current. Voltage is 1.5 volts. Um, and the resistance is 66 ohms. And so when I calculate current, that is going to give me 0 0.023 amps, okay? Now, once I have that, then I can use my power equation, P equals I times V, and I can calculate the amount of power. So power equals 0 0.023 amps, times 1.5 volts and that is going to give me a final answer of 0 0.035 watts okay 
So again, the circuit looks messy, it looks complicated, um, but what you're going to do on these problems is you're gonna take your parallel resistors and you're going to simplify them down to one. Then you're gonna take your series resistors and calculate what the effective resistance is for the entire circuit. Then once you know effective resistance, then you're gonna be able to calculate current. Once you know current, you can use that to calculate power. And so you're gonna basically be using this same type of reasoning on all the problems that you're gonna be working the next couple of days.